You still think this is what God wants? Executive Order 11001, federal seizure of all health, education, and welfare facilities, both public and private. Executive Order 11002 empowers the Postmaster General to register every single person in the U.S. Executive Order 11003, federal seizure of all airports and aircraft. Executive Order 11004, federal seizure of all housing and finances and authority to establish forced relocation, authority to designate areas to be, to be abandoned as unsafe, establish new locations for population, relocate communities, build new housing with public funds. Executive Order 11,005, seizure of all railroads, inland waterways, and storage facilities, both public and private. Executive Order 11,051, provides FEMA complete authorization to put above orders into effect in times of increased international tension of economic or financial crisis. Basically, they get to do whatever they want. Now I ask you, is that something worth trusting? Sounds like Egypt. Is that something that we want to put our faith in? That we want to put our trust in? That we want to put our hope in? And I asked you, how many people do you know today are putting their faith, hope, and trust in that system? That scares me. And the scary thing is, the church is subjecting itself to that system because they don't understand the Word of God. They don't understand that the government God has ordained for us to be in obedience to is not man's government, but his government. It's apostles, prophets, pa evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's his ordained government that we are to be in fear of and that we are to obey, not the White House. Amen. We created that. God didn't. Right. We created that. We, the people, it's created that. Us. It's supposed to serve us. Okay? We serve God. They serve us. Do you hear me? Now this is a point that will ruffle a lot of feathers. And fine if you get ruffled, I don't care. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here to stroke you. I'm not here to help you feel better when you leave. I'm here to see that you know the truth and that you take that truth and hopefully do something with it. I can't make you do that, but I can give you the truth. In Jeremiah chapter 17, I was going to start verse 5, I'm back up to verse 1. I think that there are some people out there that think the United States can be saved. I don't think it can be. I don't think it can be. I think much like the Jews... The United States have, has crossed the line. The best you can hope for is deliverance from the judgment. Or for God to sustain you through it. But I do not think it can turn around. I hope I'm wrong. But as I was doing research this morning, I came across this passage in Jeremiah 17, verse 1. It says, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with a point of a diamond. Sounds to me it's pretty certain. The forsaking of God that this country has done, I don't think we can recover from it. I don't think we can. And it's squarely the fault of the church for where we are today. Because they did not hold God as supreme, but rather wanted a king to be like other nations. They, forsake, they forsook God in favor of man, which is exactly what Judah did. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with a point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst your children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills, O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and the high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou even thyself shalt dis discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee 
And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire of mine anger, which shall burn forever. I believe we are at that place with the United States. That while there are many of people out there being religious, they yet don't know Christ. They yet walk after their own imagination and their own heart is not right. Going on to verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. When I talk to even Christians today, and I talk to them about the concept of trusting God. I'm, I'm talking another language. I mean, I might as well be talking Swahili because they don't know what, they don't have a clue what I'm talking about. They don't, they just don't get it. Their trust is spread on so many different things. Their trust is spread on the welfare system or their trust is spread on social security or their trust is spread on President Obama or their trust is spread on on the next tax bill that's coming through their trust is spread everywhere but where it needs to be and that's square on Jesus Christ I might as well just be talking some you know I might a language from outer space when I talk to Christians about <coughs> trusting in Christ for everything this has been a big change in my life and I'm nowhere near where I need to be but learning what it really means to get down to the brass tacks of trusting Jesus Christ for everything, when you realize, when I realized how many places I wasn't trusting him, it scared the heck out of me. It scared me to think, wait, am I trusting the doctor or am I trusting Christ? Am I trusting my client or am I trusting Christ? Am I trusting Brad or am I trusting Christ? Doesn't matter what it is. Are we putting our faith in people or are we putting our trust in God? And I looked at my life and I examined my heart. And you know, it talks about in Matthew about if your eye be single, you be full of light. If your eye be evil, it's full of darkness. That evil is, is when, you're, when your focus is spread on a lot of different places. He's talking about where's your faith. If your faith be single on Christ, your body's full of light. If your focus is scattered and your faith is spread on all these little mechanisms and means, then it's evil. And it's darkness. Christ is calling His people and calling His church to focus their faith on Him and Him alone. His way and His way alone. As Paul was just saying, His way and His way alone. I was thinking last after last service on Wednesday, how different my life would have been if I had lived my life according to God's way. And I started, these, these justifications started coming, well, you can't do that. And I started thinking, wait a minute. Why can't I do that? Well, you just, you just can't do it. I'm having this internal conversation. I'll give you an example. I had a friend of mine in high school who his family was... Religious is maybe the wrong word, but they were very dedicated to the Lord. And they brought their children up in the ways of the Lord. And I had this buddy of mine, and he worked like crazy. Never spent a dime. He lived with his parents till he was 30, and when he finally decided to get married, he went out and paid cash for a house. Because they didn't believe in debt. There's an example of someone who did it God's way quiet room <laughs> well the thing is I was thinking well how do you buy a house without borrowing money you live with your parents so you can afford it and you don't waste your money on everything that the world tries to throw I mean you can do it you can do it you can live as God has purposed for you to live if you commit to it and you submit and subject yourself to their rules and